Hey, I'm Chris Zach from Make Everything, and today I'm gonna to be talking about belt sanders, but not this kind, ones that use little tiny belts that might help you in your shop, called band files. Let's get into it. All right, so everybody's got a belt sander around their shop. They use a belt, um, but typically they're two, three, maybe four inches wide, and they're really made for like kind of sanding surfaces, maybe sanding curves and wood, but you may have never used or you may have heard of and just not know a lot about what's called a band file. Now a band file uses a very small belt. This one is half inch wide by 18 inches long. And it's great for getting into like hard to reach places and different things in wood and metalwork. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the couple that I have on the bench, different price points from like real, real cheap to something more expensive and see if maybe it's something that you could use in your shop. All right, so I've got a couple different band files here in front of me. Now these three use the same uh, half inch by 18 inch long belt. This one's battery powered. This is a 60 to $100, it's Ryobi, it's cordless. I really, really like this because it's cordless. It's also variable speed. There's a little knob here on the back. And uh, it's pretty easy to change the belt. This one is from Harbor Freight. Uh, this one plugs in. You can adjust the angle that the belt kind of is at, um, you know, in case you gotta get into a tight spot. And it's got a pretty large uh, 5.3 amp motor on it. This is about 40 bucks, 40, $50. The next one I've got, I bought on Amazon specifically to kind of show off what another cheap one would be um, for this video. This one's also got some adjustability in the angle that you can use it at. Um, the thing that's interesting about this one is that it has a dust port on the side, which I thought was kind of cool if you were doing woodwork. It uses, again, a half by 18 inch belt, variable speed knob here on the back, but this one is only two amps, so it's gonna have less power than this much larger Harbor Freight one. And now this, if you're in sort of a more professional metal shop environment, you may be aware of. This is made by a company called Dynabraid. Uh, the name Dynafile kind of comes from this, and this uses a quarter inch or half inch by 24 inch belt. And I'll show you a little bit more about this one. This one is pneumatic and probably the best one that I have in my shop. These are between four and $600, but there's a reason why something like this might be a little bit better for your application than one of the cheaper ones, but I'll get you in close. We'll do some experiments and I'll show you why uh, this one can do things a little bit different. So to get the belt off one of these, there's usually a little quick latch that pulls the kind of tool arm in. This one has a rubber contact wheel on it, which I actually like a lot because you get a little bit of softness out of that. You can grind using the tip. Now these can often be used to grind out spot welds in like an automotive application. I actually use the kind of platen on this to kind of finesse corners and do some grinding. So again, half by 18, belt comes off, belt goes back on, super easy. And then on this one in particular, you adjust the tracking with this little knob. Now the Dynabraid, the Dynafile, is a little bit different because the belt is so long, This and this has a pneumatic motor that's up here inside. What you do is by pushing in this little lever, the belt comes loose and then there's a little drive wheel in there that you have to get the belt around. You can see how much longer this belt is. Now there's something to be said about having a longer sanding belt on your tool because if this is 24 inches long and this is 18 inches long, that means this has 33% more material on the belt. So this belt is inherently gonna last longer because there's just more material on it. It's the same thing like if you're using a one by 30 inch belt grinder and then you switch to a two by 72, you're gonna find that your belts last longer. Now the other thing is that the RPM of the Dynabraid is a little bit higher at its max and it's also you know adjustable because it's pneumatic, but I do sometimes have trouble when I'm in a hurry fishing this belt back on, but you do get a lot of really nice control out of it. Um, and there is still a platen and this one has a little rubber wheel on it. Let me hook some air up to this so you can see it run. So with the quarter inch band, you can do a lot. And with this little wheel on the front, you can actually get into tight spaces. And you can imagine you're only grinding a quarter inch wide area versus a half inch wide area that you'd be doing with this. So you can get just into a smaller area. And what's also nice about it is you can get into hard to reach places. So this is just like a crappy hook that I tried to bend up. But if I needed to grind the inside of this, I could use sort of the slack side of this tooling arm here and I could grind in there pretty nicely. Yeah. 
So you might be able to hear my compressor running in the background. That's something to note about using one of these. They use a lot of air. This is a pneumatic tool and it's running for long periods of time. Not like an impact wrench where you're just taking off a bolt and putting it back on. So you're gonna want a pretty large compressor or an extra tank to hold air if you're gonna use one of these. I have an 80 gallon and it does turn on pretty quickly when I'm using my Dynafile. This is just a piece of mild steel, but I want to show you the difference between having a rubber contact wheel on the end of one of these versus having just a metal bearing in the finish that you get from the grinder. So with a rubber wheel, you can grind a pretty fine area. This is an 80 grit belt on there, so I'm not getting a super fine grind out of it anyway, but it is pretty clean and it can be pretty smooth if you're using a higher grip belt. Now let me show you what happens if you just use a metal bearing. So this very inexpensive WEN uh, band file just has a metal ball bearing on the end. And that is essentially the, the idler wheel, the contact wheel, and it has these kind of spring-loaded platens, which I don't really love that much. But again, I literally bought this for the video just to know that I could explain every option that was out there or at least some of the options. There's a little button in here you have to press, which then adds tension back to the belt. But I'm gonna do another little grind right here so you can see the difference between the two. So it's a little hard to see on camera, but with that rubber wheel, you get a lot nicer of a grind. With the metal wheel as the contact wheel, the the heavy grind marks wind up being a lot deeper and harder to get out. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna buy one of these. Try to get one that has a rubber wheel on the end. So you just have a little more give and you get a little softer of a grind. Now one of the areas that these tools really shine is cleaning up the insides of pieces of tube. Obviously you can imagine this is gonna fit inside a variety of different tubes and you can really clean up inside corners. And if you need to, you can grind the weld out from inside a piece of tubing pretty easily. So this is a piece of inch and a half square and there's a pretty bad weld seam inside of it. Now, if I needed to slide something through this, it can be a little bit tricky. Now, Jason from Fireball had a great video where he made a tool that like cut the weld out, but you could also just stick one of these in there and grind that weld out if you had to. You can see that that interior seam has been ground down. And now if I had to slip a tube in there, I probably could. Pretty fast and easy way to do that. So here we've got the dreaded inside MIG welded corner. Now in this application, there's a variety of different things I could use, but one of the things I really like is to actually use a Dynafile and use one of these kind of rounder radius wheels to grind that. Now you can imagine uh, if I had a grinding belt on there, this would be perfect to dress that inside corner. Now, the Dyna braid has a variety of different arms that you can put on it. Um, and this one I have on there is just a, a quarter inch with a flat wheel on the end. But I'll show you quickly, if I were to take the belt off, I could then undo this little thumb screw. And these have a spring pressure on them, which helps you track. So you use this thumb screw to not only hold on the tooling arm, but you also use it to track the tooling arm. And we can put this on. So you take this tooling arm off and then you can put on this new one, which has a little wheel on the end, like I said, to get inside that corner. Now there's a ton of different tooling arms that Dynabraid makes for this style tool. And you can really get a lot of different things done um, especially once you get you know, out of the quarter inch, you can put half inch belts on this as well, which you can see in these two half inch wide tooling arms. But let me show you how I can dress up this corner pretty quickly with this tool. So not only did I change the tooling arm, but I'm also gonna change the belt. I'm gonna switch to an 80 grit. And these little quarter inch by 24 inch belts you know, they are only a quarter inch wide, so they don't last a tremendously long amount of time, but I have found that these fared ones last a really long time compared to the really cheap ones that you get from China that you can buy on Amazon. So like any of these tools, if you invest in good consumables, you're gonna have a much better time using the tool. 
So now you see I've got that belt on there. Let's grind out this corner and see how we do. So super quick, just takes a couple of seconds and I can get that weld ground down to a nice clean corner. Now obviously I can keep going, uh, but using that rounded contact wheel on the front basically just perfectly fits in that corner. And it's using just this quarter inch of belt here and grinding that out. Now, obviously this is the most expensive tool that I showed. So I'm gonna do the other side with a cheaper half by 18. So you can just sort of see the difference. And again, we've got an 80 grit belt on here. So definitely a lot harder to do because this wheel and this belt is just so much wider. Now, something I guess you could do was you could probably crown this rubber wheel if this was specifically what you were going to use this tool for probably pretty easily. And I don't know if Ryobi sells additional tooling arms for it. I've never seen any, but you know, you are able to clean it up just not as easily. That being said, if I wanted to clean up like the inside edge of this, it's super easy to do that. So I switch this back over to the side that we did with the Dynafile. And what I wanna show you is a different type of belt that is becoming more and more popular and I really like using them. This is a surface conditioning, like a non-woven belt. And what I really like about this is that you're not grinding the material anymore. You're basically finishing it off. Um, and I use these a lot on my angle grinder. I use these a lot on my two by 72, but to have one on a really small belt so you can just sort of clean up finished parts, especially clean up like any cast metal or anything like that, or anything that's decorative. A surface conditioning belt really does a great job. So you can see, you know, basically it looks like Scotch-Brite. It's that non-woven abrasive. And in a quarter by 24 inch form, you can really get into tight places and clean stuff up. Now, inside this corner, it's just gonna take some of those grind lines down. So now look at how nice and smooth and blended that inside corner is. Now that's achieved with this kind of coarse non-woven belt. I really, really like using these. They're great for cleaning stuff up, especially if you're doing anything like in raw metal. Like for instance, again, with these hooks, I have a couple of these laying around. I could easily get like a nice finish on the inside of this without taking away any material or leaving any grind lines. super clean and smooth finish that you can put your finger in without getting any mill scale stuck in it. You know, just a really nice addition to one of these very, very nimble kind of portable wheels. Now, that being said, I know a lot of people aren't gonna go out and spend four or $500 on a Dynafile because they are about that much. You can get uh, these same surface conditioning belts for a half by 18. And these are also made by Fair. These are the Polyflees and super high quality, they last a really long time, and you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of one of these versus a you know really cheap kind of no-name brand one. Get a nice kind of brushed finish out of something like this. They're also great for pulling off paint. So if you have to get paint off of something in a hard to reach spot, if you're trying to do a restoration, getting in there with a surface conditioning belt on a kind of arm like this can be really, really helpful. Now, I think it goes without saying, but these things obviously work great on wood. Um, I've actually seen guys that do railings, custom railings, use these to like sculpt corners. This is literally just a metal brush. I think it's got a hickory handle on it. So I can just show you how it shreds some wood. And this when, which I got on Amazon, does have some dust collection, which might be kind of nice if you're using this for woodworking. Now 
wood. Now I will say this one, the switch is in just like a terrible spot. So this is kind of a one-handed tool. You don't need a lot of kind of leverage when you're using this. So to have the switch all the way back here, I, I, I gotta like move my hands around to turn it off. This one from Harbor Freight, which is more than twice as strong, the switch is right here like an angle grinder. But it's only one speed. So, you know, buyer beware. This one's also super heavy. This one's nice and light. But honestly, the Ryobi batteries and the Ryobi battery platform, I have a lot of their tools. I wouldn't say that they're like super professional grade, but this thing is 18 volt. You can put a nice big battery on it. It'll run for a really long time. And I found that this thing works out awesome. Every now and then they're on sale for like 60 bucks at Home Depot. And I would definitely, you know, invest in one of these. And then you don't have a cord to worry about. So another application where something like this can be really useful is like inside of a part, right? So there's not really any other tool that could get in here and sand this unless I actually took a piece of sandpaper and by hand and went in there. Or I guess I could, you know, kind of put some sandpaper around a wooden stick and kind of sand it like that. Now with, now with one of these band files, I could easily get inside, inside and around corners and clean that up. All right, that about does it for this video. Band files are something that every shop should have. They're cheap enough where there's no reason why you shouldn't just buy like the $40 one. Uh, and even if you use it one time, especially if you're like a woodworker or like a fine metal worker, like if you need to get like inside of the back of a chair or you know if you're making furniture and you need to just kind of get inside a corner, you know, using a powered sander is always gonna be faster than trying to do it by hand and your orbital is not gonna get everywhere. So uh, I personally like this one because it's cordless and um, it does an okay job. It's easy to stall the motor. It's a very small little motor. I wonder if it says it's like wattage or anything on here. No, it doesn't say anything, um, but it's cordless. Now, if you want to go to the top, top end and you're going to be doing a lot of work and you're going to want something that's really going to last and, and have a lot of accessories, go out and get a DynaBraid. Uh, Dynafile is a really great tool. They're really uh, readily available on eBay and the accessories are really readily available on eBay. Like I said, this one, right now I have the quarter inch uh, belts on it, but you have these half inch adapters where you can do basically the same stuff that these others do. And because it's got that longer belt, right? That 24 inch long belt, you're gonna get 33% more abrasive than on a half by 18 um, or almost 33% more, whatever, close enough. So the thing to remember about these though, is that they're only as good as the abrasive that you put on them, right? If you have one of these and you have like the garbage abrasive that comes with it, which these all come with like three sanding belts, they're gonna wear out in, in two minutes. Um, so go ahead and invest in a better abrasive. I'm using the Faird Ceramic, uh, the CO Cool Ceramic, the, these red belts, they last so much longer than the cheap aluminum oxide ones. And that's what's gonna make the difference. And that's what's gonna make one of these tools actually worth using that and get yourself some of these surface conditioning belts because those will also just go a really long way, especially if you're doing anything in kind of the artistic area um, or anything decorative that needs to be finished to a high quality finish. Uh, that inside corner was super easy to blend and make look really nice with just a couple of seconds. And this would be a real pain to get in and do by hand um, and make this clean. I'd have to actually physically go in there with some sandpaper and try to like kind of round it out. So anyway, I really like bringing tools to people's attention that they might not know about. So band files were something that I didn't know about for a really long time. And now more and more brands are making cordless ones. And obviously uh, these pneumatic ones have been around. So I think it's something that's worth investing in. Um, I use them all the time and they're great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Give it a thumbs up if you got something out of it and check below in the description and in the pinned comment for some links as to where you can get some of these tools and where you can get some really good abrasives from the people over at Faird. Um, they make great stuff and I really like it. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop. I'm always posting what's kind of going on in the shop day-to-day -day, um, and kind of little previews of the new videos and projects that are coming next. So I hope to see you there. Hope to see you on the next video. Again, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything. Thanks for watching.